audience, welcome to Empower In and welcome to the Nurse Empowerment Webinar. I'm so excited you decided to join me. I know 100% that being happy as a nurse and being fulfilled as a nurse is really just a decision. But knowing simple tools that'll help you make that decision is totally priceless. So I hope that I provide you with that in this webinar. If you want, you can look below in the description section and you can know exactly when the videos are going to be posted. And I'm going to trickle them out slowly because I really want you to take time with these videos, do the exercises at the end of the videos, and make sure you really just let it all sink in. Because you know what? You have control of your career, of where you're gonna go from here, of where your life is gonna go from here. You have the ultimate control. So one exciting announcement is I'm going to be giving away a scholarship for $600 for the Achieve Test Prep Program. Guys, if you have your LPN or LVN and you're looking to get your RN or BSN, this is the perfect opportunity for you. Also, if you have your RN and you're looking to get your BSN, guys, there's no better way to empower yourself than with the right degree that can move you forward. So if you look below in the description section, you'll see information about how to enter the scholarship giveaway. All right, guys, get excited and let's start the program. See you in a bit. Step number one, start simple. Years ago, every single thing seemed to overwhelm me. I had dreams to make my life better, but I didn't know how to do it because I had no confidence no skills, and very poor self-esteem. I remember one day I was extremely depressed and I ran into my father. He asked me what was wrong and I just told him that I was just depressed. And he looked at me and he said something that changed my life forever. And he said, you're choosing to be that way. Why are you doing that to yourself? To be honest with you, I thought that was a really mean thing to say. And at that moment, I didn't really say that much. I kind of just mumbled something and then I walked away. But as I thought about it and I started to dive deeper, I said to myself, is it possible that I am allowing myself to feel this way? I really felt like for so many years that I was a victim to how I felt and that the thoughts just came to me and I was almost powerless when they did come to me. Many times I felt like I had very little control and I would fear when the next thought would come of what it would be. A lot of the positive books that I would read would give great examples on how to dream, plan your life, but it didn't really help me with the daily steps. I would find myself feeling completely alone, no one to talk to, and I would just be stuck in my thoughts. I wanted to be a good person. I wanted to be a person that helped other people. The idea of nursing had not yet crossed my mind because to be completely honest with you, I didn't think that I was smart. Because you see, in the eighth grade, I was held back and tested for learning disabilities so I was held back an entire year in school, which was very embarrassing. And then during high school, I had to attend summer school almost every single year except my senior year. I really felt like I had no academic ability and definitely nothing came easy for me. I decided after high school that I would not go back to school. I would work instead. But after five years of working, I decided that I really wanted a different life and I wanted a better life. And more than that, I really wanted my parents who worked so hard to be proud of me. So I decided to go back to school. And as you can imagine, I decided to go to nursing school mainly because my mom was a nurse and everyone around me kept saying you'd be such a good nurse so I thought about it and I said well I do like being around people I really do care about people even strangers I care about and ultimately nursing would be a career that I could almost always rely on having a steady job so I decided to take on the biggest challenge in my entire life and that was go back to college it didn't start out very pretty and I had to work extremely hard to get the grades that I wanted to get. And school was taking all of my time and all of my attention. I then started doing what this program is about and these are the steps that I still do to this day. And these are focusing on the subtle shifts and the subtle thoughts and the subtle things that you can control. You see, I had dreams of becoming a nurse, but I realized early on that the odds of me gaining acceptance into nursing school and even passing nursing school were really against me. So I started doing what I'm going to teach you in this program, and that is subtle shifts. Subtle mind shifts, and it starts from attacking your current beliefs. I believed in the past that I was incapable, that I was not smart, that I was lazy, and unlovable. Now, beliefs are a funny thing because a lot of beliefs we get from our current environment. For example, when you're a child, you are taught to believe certain things. And for the most part, those things are usually good. You're taught to believe that if you fall off of a chair, that that's not good. Or that if you don't listen to your parent, that 
that also is not good. But sometimes the beliefs can go to an even greater or deeper level. For example, if you start to believe that you are a bad person because a few times you didn't do what your parents said, or that you're a selfish person, or that you are stupid, or that you are lazy, or that you do not have self-control, that is where the problem seems to happen. That is what can cause major problems. The problem is that subconsciously even, without our thinking about it, these beliefs are guiding every step of our life. For example, I avoided college for five years because I believed that I was stupid. Another belief that held me back was I believed that after nursing school that my ideas might not be valuable. It took me months to convince myself to actually start writing my first book which since then has helped thousands of people. Beliefs are so powerful at, at instructing every single step we take that it can cause some people to do extreme things such as violence, murder, abuse, drug usage, and more. Beliefs are what shape people like Adolf Hitler and Gandhi. It is so important to understand what your ingrained beliefs are so that you can understand what is guiding you and why you're doing what you're doing. What is good about beliefs is that once we understand what our beliefs are, we can start challenging them. For example, I started challenging the belief that I was stupid and I said, is that really the case? Or have I just not developed good study patterns? And by learning ways to study better and ultimately getting good grades, I eliminated that belief and I realized that I'm not stupid. I'm actually kind of intelligent. We all have good beliefs and bad beliefs. The way you can differentiate a good belief from a bad belief is really simple. A good belief is something that will get you to where you want to go. For example, if you want to be a successful nurse, if you want to be a great employee, if you want to be the type of nurse that makes your patients feel very good, then that is a belief that is going to be positive. Negative beliefs, however, are beliefs of inadequacy. They are beliefs that challenge our worth. For example, you're not a good nurse. And then what happens is with each of these beliefs, good or bad, we start placing facts under them. And these so-called facts strengthen the belief. For example, if you believe that you're a bad nurse, then you're gonna have a lot of things to go under that belief. For example, you forgot to bring your patient water when they asked, or you forgot that patient needed pain medication, or you let a patient irritate you. Whereas a good belief could be the exact opposite, where you focus on the good attributes that you have. I'm a good nurse because I made one of my patients feel special today. Or I said something to a patient that she said or he said touched their heart and gave them inspiration. Or I'm a good nurse because my nursing director and other coworkers told me that I was. The most amazing thing about beliefs, however, is it's not based on fact. It's based on our perception of fact. The same exact situation can happen to two people, can happen to two nurses, and they can have vastly different views on what happened. For example, let's say the nurse in charge gave two different nurses a new patient. One nurse might say, why is the nurse in charge treating me like this? Why are they segregating me like this? Don't they know that I'm busy? Don't they know that I don't have time? Don't they know that I'm behind? And why are they giving me more work? They always give me more work. Whereas another nurse that also took a new patient could say to herself, I can see that the charge nurse knows I'm busy and I can see that all the other nurses are busy as well. I think that I got the first patient because I'm the most well-abled nurse. You see, it actually doesn't stop there though. The nurse that has the negative approach, this event of accepting a new patient is going to carry a negative vibe unless he or she does something to change that. Whereas with the other nurse that had a different view, which was still all created by his or her mind, is going to have a much different approach. They're going to go in there confident, feeling strong, and feeling like they're capable of accepting this new assignment. What's even worse though, is that one negative belief will lead into another negative belief. And negativity at the workplace will not only stay at the workplace, it will bleed into every other area of your life. A nurse that has a negative experience at work and believes that he or she is a victim is more likely to go home and speak to their spouse about the event and also maybe even call up their friends and talk about the event more, which means that they are reliving that event multiple times. The opposite is also true. The nurse that positively finds a way to view any challenge 
This will also bleed over into the other areas of his or her life. And the end result can be more positive experiences, not only at work, but also at home or when speaking with their spouse or friends and everything else that they do. Now, what are examples of beliefs? Here are some examples of negative beliefs. Of course, I am stupid. I am incapable. I am a victim. My employer is out to get me. People are trying to hurt me. People are trying to take advantage of me. I'm not successful because of fill in the blank. I always get the worst patient. And if you would like, I'm sure you could go on and on. And here are some examples of some positive beliefs. I am smart, I am capable, I am resilient, I am healthy, I am a leader, I am positive, I matter, I make a difference, I help people, I am a team member and we're all in this together, I am lucky, I am grateful. So here is your first exercise. Write down two positive and two negative beliefs that you have. Believe me, we all have negative beliefs. <laughs> But it's very good to also highlight your positive beliefs because you've already experienced a great deal of success to be where you are today. After you write down those beliefs, also write down what this belief has added to your life or in the instance of a negative belief, what has this belief taken away from you? We're going to pause right now for some reflection time and I will see you in the next step.